Hi, I'm Matthias Beck, one of the authors of Computing the Continuous Discreetly. At the end of each chapter in this video series, we will host a short conversation. In, in chapter one, we will begin with my co-author on this book, Sinai Robbins. Sinai is now a professor in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, and I reached him over a video conference. I, I had this idea of, of, of doing these chats, you yeah. know, maybe always at the end of a chapter. Um, and so, and so, and so, you know, there was several reasons why I thought about you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you know, number one, I owe you, I owe you so much of this, this stuff. Uh, uh, number two is, uh, well, we wrote the book together, right. but also right. number three, I thought it was kind of cool because, because the, the first chapter is with a Frobenius uh, problem. And, and I know that you've been sort of like really, really, really fond of the, I mean, I learned of the Frobenius problem from you. Well, and, and, then and I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to know, like, w when when did you first hear about this? I, I don't think I've ever asked you this. And and by the way, Matt, I, I, thank you for saying all that. But uh, as you know, then I learned a lot of stuff from you. I mean, so <laughs> uh, so it was it goes both ways now. Okay, let's see. So when did I first think of the Frobenius coin exchange problem? It uh, it was um, it seemed like five lifetimes ago, but. Um, Let's see. I, I must have read about it um, back. Uh, at, so I started in modular forms, and then I moved to, from modular forms into kind of applications of uh, Fourier analysis uh, techniques, post summation techniques, and so on, which was kind of natural for me, natural for Ricardo. And then I think I started thinking of of this with Ricardo back in Colorado. I remember that. Uh, but even before that, um, probably when I was a student, when I was a graduate student at UCLA, I, I was fond of the problem. But I remember talking about it with Rich Schwartz when I was at UCLA too, mm -hmm. way back. That's I was always fond, you know, I was really fond of this kind of magical thing that you dilate and you get a polynomial and why, do, why the hell do you get a polynomial and blah, 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 blah. So I was always kind of fond of it since I was an undergraduate. As, as Rich kind of was fond of saying, I made a career out of dilating and counting. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, in particular, the Frobenius coin exchange problem seemed, even when I was a graduate student, it's, I never really did research about it as a graduate student, but it always was in the back of my mind because it seemed like such a, for one, it's a semi-group. For another thing, it's a one-dimensional problem. For another thing, it, it motivates generating functions. For another thing, it motivates Fourier analysis. So it kind of combines everything in a way that's that's concrete for the student. I, I remember when we started working on this book, it sort of like started like a joke, right? But but I remember very early on, you said like, we need to start with a Frobenius problem. Oh yeah, okay. Do you remember this? I, I don't remember that I, I said that, but uh, I, I, but you liked it, I guess, right? Yeah, it's, so it's completely natural, but that, yeah. that uh, it's, well, it's in, in, in one sense, it's like really natural. In another sense, it's kind of like, you know, a little daunting. Why is it daunting? Uh, because, no. it's, oh, because it's kind of hard. It's, you know, you start, you start sort of in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, well, as you know, you start computing and then it gets sort of, you know, you have to yeah, pay your yeah. price for, for being able to, to compute some formulas, you know, right from the start. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's all, it's all nice, but so that's what I mean. It's like it, it, I feel like it's the same time. It's, it's a really good, good idea, and and um, it's non non traditional. Let's let's call it that, and that in the most positive, uh, in the most positive way of the word. <laughs> and I, I get I, I get what you're saying, and uh, yeah, I guess it was non traditional for both of us. And I remember once I did some computations way back in uh, in the late '90s about it right before your your phd was done at temple and then i showed it to you and then i said look i have i don't know how to finish this exactly 
and then you came along with your uh, residue uh, methods and uh, and and you finished it, it uh, you know in a way that I didn't so I, I remember something that that uh, to that effect that Ricardo and I did something and then you you were able to do it in a much slicker way it was a good match uh, what's that it was a good match then it was a good match I mean you were able to do something that I thought would take a lot longer and would be uh, very very messy and and with your method it became uh, very slick I remember that um, and so anyway I, I I guess it was it was naturally it, it, it was natural a natural development for for both of us in the uh, in another sense I, I remember writing with you we were together that it was um, it's 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 a scaffolding. You kind of build a building and you build the scaffolding, and then you shed the scaffolding of the Fabrinius coin, and then you left with the with the theory. So it was also kind of a nice scaffolding for us to build the the, the theory. But um, yeah, it, I mean, yeah. Here, well, here, here's another thing that I that I that I that I thought now while I was going through this, you know, recording these videos and preparing my class. Um, What's behind the Frobenius problem is a, is a rational polytope. So, so you know, we're starting, we're starting with a rational case, which is, <laughs> which you know, I love, but but that's the hard case, correct? I mean, in terms of right. the number theory, right. it's a we're kind of we're kind of hiding it a little bit, right, <laughs> under the rug. That, that uh, yeah, you're right. So we're starting with, in a sense, we're starting with the hardest case. We're we start kind of making it the easiest case, in a sense. Uh, yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive. Well, the polytope is a simplex, so that maybe that's that's the consolation prize. You know, I always thought the word simplex is a misnomer. It's, it sounds like it's going to be simple, but it's not. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well said. <laughs> Uh, simplex. <laughs> in any case, uh, that's interesting. Uh, what are you going to start with in your class? I want the students to get an idea of like what goes into actually computing. Um, and so I definitely want to do, you know, towards the end of the class, for example, I want to do uh, Kowalski Puklikov. Um, okay, very good. Yeah, you know, very good. I mean, and, and, you know, you know, this is, it is, it is, it is beautiful. And then, but actually you want to actually compute and, you know, whatever, an Earhart polynomial, just a polynomial. And it's, right. it, it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's instructive and it's, and it's hard and fun. <laughs> yeah. I, it's still kind of magical. The Chovansky theorem is very magical. I, I describe it to my students as you, you take a pot up and you blow air into it and then it kind of inflates and then you 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 kind of you attack it with this discrete operator, the Todd operator, and magically you count the points inside. It's kind of magical, right? It's, uh, That's right. That's right, yeah. It's still kind of magical. I mean, we see every step, but it's the, at the end you, still get, you get this magical uh, approach. Yeah, and the same with the constant term, you know, the constant term computations, yeah. you know, you have, you have, you have these generating functions in several variables and you say, okay, this all makes sense. And to which I say, all right, let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's easy? Okay, here you go. You prove it. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Uh, great to see you, Matt. And thanks for doing uh, this. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank, thank you.